my sense at the moment is that the UK is somewhat of a tinderbox. And so... Yes, yes. and I wish, I wish it hadn't been so predictable. Um, I, uh, again, I, I wrote about this so many years, uh, warned about it. Uh, Strange Death of Europe was a, largely my last ditch attempt to warn my own society of birth and other Western countries not to go down the path that they were precisely going down. And as a former government minister said in the Times a couple of days ago, the thing about my, my prediction on that was that I made them not with any glee, but in a spirit of deep lamentation about what was about to happen to my society. And as I see it, there, um, Tommy Robinson's a very exa interesting example of, 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 of this whole thing. But let me just explain where, how I see it. The, uh, this whole conflagration of recent days uh, it started when a 17-year-old went into a Taylor Swift dance class a couple of weeks ago now and uh, started hacking at young girls with a knife. Killed three girls, nine-year-olds, thereabouts, wounded many others. And the news of that came out at a very typical modern British, modern European, modern Western thing happened, which was that in the aftermath, people started to suspect something was being kept from them. Now, wiser heads would wait, but not everyone's a wise head after nine-year-old girls are bludgeoned to death, um, stabbed to death. And so false information went out online saying that the uh, attacker was a uh, 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 had arrived on, on one of the many boats of illegal migrants that come across the English Channel every every week. Uh, that was untrue. Uh, in fact, he was the son of um, immigrants from Rwanda. But uh, people started to sense that there was a cover-up of some kind, or at least the news was being managed. The police in Britain th seem always to think they're being very clever at this, and it's always seemed to me that they exacerbate every problem they put their their mind to. Um, they insisted that the uh, first, the young man was originally from Cardiff, uh, the capital of Wales. And pe people just sense there's something, there's something with their, they're holding from us, sure enough. Um, anyway, the point is, is that very uh, unpleasant, ugly, and again, evil forces can get unleashed at such a time, the spirit of revenge. And some uh, protests started peacefully at first, then some violent. A mosque was targeted nearby, and then violence started to spread out to other towns. Then Muslim communities started to arm up, in some cases literally, the people turning up uh, with knives to defend their areas. Um, this is all, and maybe it'll die down by the time this podcast has gone out, or maybe it'll get a lot worse. But the one thing you can say with absolute certainty is it's not going to go away, because all of this is the consequence of what I call the problem of primary and secondary problems. The primary problem in the UK, as in Europe in recent years, has been the total unwillingness of the political and other classes in the UK to address deep, deep concerns of the public. And when people said in recent days, how could anyone leap to such a conclusion that the attacker would be, and you go, because everyone's seen this before. You know, people don't actually forget very fast, the media class may, but they don't forget very fast that it's only seven years ago that uh, the son of Libyan migrants to the UK went and detonated a suicide bomb at an Ariana Grande concert, concert in Manchester. They don't forget fast that three people who had no right to be in the UK, including one whose asylum claim had been rejected, but who was nowhere near being deported, went across London Bridge in 2017, hacking at the throats of passers-by and shouting, Alu Akbar. They don't forget that. They notice it. But the, uh, the British government and others have had this very, very clear policy that they don't really know what to do to tackle that. They don't know what to do really to tackle the grooming gangs issue. There was another set of prosecutions the other day and another uh, case is coming to court in the, in the coming weeks. You could say, 
Well, they clearly do. They're using the law. But, the, but a lot of the public say, well, not fast enough and not really. There's an awful lot of rapists still walking around with girls who are their victims in the same towns. And the government knows that the public ascribe this to the government's immigration policies, its integration policies, but the government can't take responsibility for that because they've made that mistake now. They've, they, 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 the, the conservative government that just left power that said that they would bring migration down to the tens of thousands a year left office with a net migration of legal migration at almost three quarters of a million a year, which is, by the way, completely unsustainable, but they just keep doing it anyway. The interesting thing that Tommy Robinson speaks to and has always spoken to is, um, what are you allowed to do about this or say about this? Now, if if you're me, for the time being... Um, you're allowed to write about it sometimes. You're allowed to speak about it sometimes. You're allowed to raise alarms sometimes. You're allowed to speak your mind somewhat. But if you're a Tommy Robinson character, if you grow up in Luton and you haven't had many advantages in life and you've had quite a lot of disadvantages and you're white and working class... What are you allowed to do about this? What are you allowed to say about any of this? And the government, for decades now, has had the attitude, you're not allowed to do anything. You're not allowed to say anything. You can't do anything, because if you do, we'll call you a racist, and we'll call you far right. And this has all gone on for a very long time. 